Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. Razavani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me, I've got Sky Sports' very own Matthew Macklin. Matt, how are we doing? I'm good, mate. Yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. Enjoyed the uh, extra hour in bed? Time's changed? Yeah, I think a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> How's the weekend been? Uh, it's been quiet, really. Didn't, haven't done too much. Not, not a lot. Just chilled out. Uh, obviously, I've got the pay-per-view week uh, coming up now. So that's always busy, uh, just prepping for it, just getting, you know, just, I don't know, it, there's always something to do. I couldn't tell you what, it, I couldn't tell you what I'm going to do, but there's always stuff to do. And Matt, before we talk anything about boxing, I, just wanna, I don't know if you, if you watch UFC or MMA, do you have much? No, I, I, not really. Um, I, I know it could be one last night, but I didn't see it. Um, mm-hmm. But I've, I've seen, I know, obviously I know who he is, you know what I mean? Um, I'm, not, I'm not a UFC fan. But I know who could beat is obviously. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I heard he was reti- he won and retired. Um, but you know what? And, and, I, and I was reading some of the comments and did, I, I watched a few of the interviews and things. You know what? I, I, he, he strikes me when he spoke. He reminded me a little bit of when Andre Ward retired. You know, it's not. I don't think he's someone that's chasing a hundred million. Do you know what I mean? He's it's like job done here, mission accomplished, uh, and. You know, they're, they're, they're men of faith, aren't they? You know, you, you, Andrew Ward is, and so is Khabib, you hear him talking. So, it, boxing's just a part of his journey, you know, and it's done. Mission accomplished, undefeated, no one beat me. I achieved what I wanted to. On to the next thing now, in life. And I think people like that sail into retirement because they realise it's, it's a part of their journey. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're in line with their true self. They're not trying to be the ego, you know, the, 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 the person in the fight, that, that's the ego, let's say, you know, the son of God, but, but Andre's Andre, Andre was Andre, and he knows that, and he can, I think people like him, can be, they can separate it, and they move on, they realise it's just a part of their life, and, and they, it's like they always knew it was only going to be a part of their life, and they don't have a problem letting it go, um, and it's great to see, you know, it's, it's lovely to see that, that they move on. I mean, listen, how could you not? I mean, you could say, how could you not? But there's people that struggle to let it go. I mean, Joe Calzaghe, you have to admire walking away at the top when there were so many big fights out there where he could have been lured for another big, massive payday. To walk away undefeated at the top, no, fair play to them, man. But like I say, I, I'm not, I've got a kid who does a bit of PT in with me. Um, he fights MMA, not UFC, but like uh, Bama and things like that, Cage Warriors. So, you know, he's always talking to me about it we're always talking about strength and conditioning and fitness and camps and different things ways we do things and you know we time again what we do differently all this sort of stuff but uh so you know i i know a little bit about mma and ufc but I, but i'm not i'm not an avid fan i don't stay in and watch them i couldn't tell you particularly who's who obviously could be you know he's, he's like the man isn't he of mcgregor and these kind of people i know who they are but i wouldn't I definitely would be a, an MMA kind of sort, and I wouldn't, I couldn't pretend to be. <laughs> no way, I wasn't going to go into intricate details about MMA. <laughs> uh, but you mentioned the Andre Ward. It, is it why is it that the, you don't get many fighters once they reach the pinnacle of the sport and achieved everything, whether they've had losses or not, but call it in? And we see so many fighters carry on and take that one too many punches. Well. It's like, it's like when you people drink alcohol or take drugs, they're, they're chasing a high. And the first, the initial high, but everything after that, if you, you're never going to get it as good, but you're constantly chasing that high where, you know, boxing the high and, you know, you hit your peak in your career, you know, you're world champion, whatever, whatever the peak of your career is. And it's amazing. And then, you know, I suppose a lot of people are trying to chase that feeling and sort of stay there and, you know, there was, um, I, I can't remember who said it. I think it was Sugar Ray Leonard when he talked about retiring and coming back. And, you know, he tried to drink, he tried the drugs, the women, all the, whatever he tried, all the stuff to try and replace it. And he never could replace it. And he had the comebacks. And obviously, 
you're never the same. You, you know, you get older. You just that's just the biological fact of of humans. We get older, and that's that. But he he said um, it took me a while to accept it. He said, and then when I did, he said um, I was at peace. He said, but I think what did he say? He said, and I, and I realized that you know, don't cry that it's over. Smile that it happened. And I love that. You know, because that you know, you dream all your life when you're a kid and you're coming through the amateurs and all this, you, you mean, you, you're dreaming and then you get to live your dreams and more and then to be what, depressed at the end of it. What, what the fuck's that all about? <laughs> what was the point in going through all that sacrifice, all that, you know, facing your fears, the loneliness, the diet in everything, to go through all that stuff, to live your dreams, to then be depressed at the end of it. You know, you've got to let it go. It was never going to be forever. And don't, I'm not saying that you, it flips overnight. It's not because you're going to miss it. And it's, and it's something you've been doing your, every single day of your life. You know, it's everything you've been thinking about. You probably haven't dreamt past this point. You know, you haven't envisaged your life past this point. So it is difficult. You know, of course it is. Even your identity. Well, who am I now? All that sort of thing. But you've got to get there. Do you know what I mean? But I, but I think guys like Khabib and Andre Ward, who are very spiritual people, they do it effortlessly. It's because it because they know they end at the center of the universe. You know, a lot of fighters, a lot of athletes can be quite selfish, self-centered. To, to a degree, maybe you have to be a little bit to because it's that kind of, you know, industry sport, whatever. But, you know. They're not, I don't think they're self-centered in that. I think that they know they're only part of a much bigger thing, you know, and, and that's what their faith gives them. So they, I think they, um, they never thought it was going to be forever. So they, they, don't have, they have no problem letting go of it and being themselves. I think, you know, yeah, that's what, I mean, I could waffle on. Do you know what I mean? So I've got to be careful. But what about yourself? When you retired, at any stage after you retired, and you were in some big fights as well, did you, did you ever think about, I want to go back in, I want to get that adrenaline, or any financial related motives? No, not really. No, I mean, see, I lost a fight in, I, lost, I, I retired 2006 in the April, in the May. I lost, my last fight was the April. Then I thought about it for a few weeks and I retired in the May. Um, to, 18 months before that, I lost the fight in Ireland. It was for final eliminated the WBC. If I'd have won it, I'd have got the fight with Cotto. Loads of injuries in the build-up. Bad camp. Anyway, you know, then, then overtrained on the physicals. I couldn't punch because my hands were fucked, basically. So then I was like, I probably overtrained on the physical side of things. Any, anyway, long story short, that's the fight. But because of those things that had happened, like the, the injuries and the overtraining, I think if I'd have retired then, and I was going to retire then, because I thought, where do I go from here? And I was, you know, I knew I wasn't the fighter I was anymore and all that sort of thing. But I think had I retired then, I probably would have come back. Because I, I think it would have niggled me because I didn't, I'd have been thinking, oh, I overtrained and I wasn't injured and all this sort of stuff. So I ended up, in my, in my head, I didn't announce retirement, but in, in my head and my heart, I had retired that, that, the next day. I thought, that's it, I'm done really. I thought, but I'll, I'll let the Christmas get out of the way in New Year's. Won't make a decision in the heat at the moment. You know, and then there was an offer to fight the Jakers for a world title, which never materialised. But anyway, it got me thinking, it got me back in. Then there was a show in Birmingham. It sucks you back in. It doesn't want to let you go. <laughs> it doesn't want to let you go. So I thought, oh, well, I'll have the fight in Birmingham, but we'll see. Then I had the fight at one. I thought, well, look, we'll have one more. And anyway, anyway, I had four fights and I won them all. But the, but the performances weren't happening. I was getting away with it. I was beating guys that, Really, a couple. Of, I was, you know, I was beating guys on points that really a couple of years earlier I probably wouldn't even have them. No disrespect as sparring partners at that time, you know. I'm not saying they maybe later on, but where I was then and where they were then, it wouldn't have. Yeah, a couple of years on, and I'm, I'm, I'm beating them, but I'm struggling. So, um, you know, I thought, what am I chasing? I thought, what am I holding on for? I suppose I was thinking maybe I can get one last big fight and go out on a world title shot and just go for it. If I win, I win. If I lose, I cash out on a world title shot. But then I realised I've probably got to beat someone, you know, decent to get that. And I probably haven't got that in me anymore. And, then, and I was cutting corners in training. And I, just, I, that, I, done, I was doing things I'd never done. 
I'd never, do you know what I mean? And I knew I'd been pro 15 years, do you know what I mean? I'd changed trainers. I've been in, in America, I've been in Spain, I've been in Manchester, been, you know, it, 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 it eats away at the hunger. Plus, I'd achieved a lot. I'd fought for the world title three times. I'd been European champion twice, but I'd earned a nice few quid. Do you know what I mean? There was, all these things happen at the same time. And I was getting older, you know, when I did have a spa, I didn't really want to get hit anymore. When I was young, but I was fearless. I, I loved the hard spa. <laughs> Harder the better. You know, now as old as I keep, oh, oh, I was trying to get through the spas without getting injured. You know, you get softer. You know what I mean? When you're young, you're like iron. I didn't give a shit. I could have gone through a wall. I didn't care. I was got older. I did care. <laughs> I had a hard spa. I couldn't get out of bed the next day. Do you know what I mean? It's, so I think it's, 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 it's like I say, I, I ain't no MMA fan, but I seen Khabib retire. I listened to his interviews and I was reading up on things. I was interested. I'm interested in it. You know, I'm interested in the mindset. You know, how some people can let it go and some people can't. Um, you know, to go out at the top, that's hard. You know, listen, when you're, when you're getting smashed up by people that wouldn't have smashed you up a few years earlier, you can't be asked to train anymore and all that. It's not so hard to go out, really, I, I, I would imagine. It's, you know, you're, all the signs are telling you to retire. But when you're at the peak, you've just, you know, you're, and, you're, and you've got all this... Uh, these amazing nights ahead of you, you can earn all this money. To let that go, that's, that's, a, that's, that, that's um, yeah, a, a, admirable. Yeah, we wish uh, Habib all the best in his retirement uh, and, and we see what he does uh, well, in the game. Uh, hopefully he stays around and trains some of the up-and-coming fighters uh, in the near future. Matt, uh, fight week, as you said, is approaching uh, this week, Sky Sports pay-per-view. Del Boy, Derek Chisora versus Usyk. Are you going to give me an impression of how they say uh, hello, Usyk? Are you going to give me one today, Matt? Who are? The, what's up, right? the theme that's going around with Derek's call, whenever he calls uh, Usyk, he's like, he uses the word hello, Usyk. Oh, hello, okay. Usyk. Have you oh, not yeah. nah, I'll, I'll leave them impressions, not for me. <laughs> Matt, Del Boy, he's, he's been in those big fights. I remember when he fought Vitaly Klitschko out in Germany, and it was a great performance, 12 rounds. He then went ahead, he fought Tyson Fury, got absolutely boxed in, in the ring. And he fought David Hay, he got knocked out. And he thought, you know what, Der Derek's just going downhill. He's almost finished now, he's gonna retire soon. And this life's come into him out absolutely nowhere. At, towards the end of his career, where, where did this spark come from for Derek? I don't know, but he's he's had some great performances, hasn't he lately? Um, he, um, you know, I, when this fight got made, I thought that's a good fight, man, because you know we all know how good Usyk is at cruiserweight, and no doubt he'll be a good fighter at heavyweight. Will he be as effective? Will he be more effective? You know, Ivan the Holyfield stepped up. You know, other guys have stepped. David Hay has stepped up. Not, not everyone steps up. And, and, and wins. Not every cruiserweight champion steps up and becomes heavyweight champion. Not everyone. Um, you know, Usyk is a, a particularly big puncher. Cruiserweight is fast. And he throws good combinations. His movement and his agility are, are phenomenal. His judge of distance, his control of that distance, that little half step he does, magic. You know, a basic move, but it does it so well that he, it works every time, you know. Um, so it, it's 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 I can't even remember the initial question because I've got I've gone on a bit of tangent, but it's um, yeah, Chisora has hit great form lately. I don't know; it could be you know sometimes you get a couple of good wins, the confidence. Maybe maybe he's maybe he doesn't maybe he's achieved a lot and he doesn't feel as much pressure on himself. I don't know, you know, I don't I don't know what it is, but he's certainly hit great form. Um, I mean, the Takam fight, he was getting beaten. He was getting well beaten, I thought, in that fight. In a good fight, but he was losing the rounds. And then, bang, that shot <laughs> he hit with that right hand. And that was, that was a bad knockout in the end. I remember thinking, ooh. And then even, um, you know, was it, was it Spilka? Sips, how do you pronounce his name? Uh, you know the guy. He, he knocked him. Yeah, yeah, flattened him. I mean, that was a heavy knockout. Um, he's in the two fights with Dillian White were great fights. You know, he, um, I mean, Dillian... Those were the sort of fights you didn't want to see anyone to lose, really, because they both fought their heart out 
First one could have probably gone either way. I thought Dillian probably nicked it, but it could have gone either way. It was close. Anyway, the rematch, you know, Del Boy was ahead. Maybe some fair play to Dillian. He, he found the shot and knocked him out. So, but it was a great fight. You know what I mean? It was a great fight. So when the, the Usyk fight, I, I said, you know, no one has a date on Twitter. I said, no one has an easy fight with um, Chisora. And of course, people come back. Well, what are you talking about? Fury twice, blah, blah, blah. David Hay. Fury, yes. Fury's six foot nine. And, and in my opinion, the best heavyweight in the world. You know, he's an unbelievable boxer. And he's massive as well. You know, Chisora just ain't going to get near someone like him. But I don't think David Hay had an easy night with Chisora. I know he knocked him out in the fifth round. Was it the fifth round? I think it was the fifth round. But I don't, I, I, it wasn't an easy night until that point. You know, let me, let me tell you, David Hay knew he'd been in a fight. You know what I mean? He was working hard in that fight. That Dalboy was putting the pressure on. You know, so, you know, I'll rephrase it. Not too many people get an easy night with Derek Chisora. And Usyk coming up from Cruiserweight, you know, not, he doesn't have the size like Fury. You know, is he gonna is it gonna be an easy night? No, do I think he'll win? Yeah, I do. I do think Juicy will win. I think he I think he'll he'll outthink him, he'll outmaneuver him, he'll be a little bit too quick, too agile, too sharp. And I think he'll he'll out, he'll out, outpoint him. I don't see him stopping him really. Maybe late on, maybe. But probably not. I th- I think he beats him on points by just outmaneuvering him, outthinking him, staying a step ahead of him, using his angles, using his feet. You know, Tazora's a lump and he's determined and he keeps coming. He's a tough, tough man. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think, I mean, Usyk, I think we'll be peppering him at times, walking him onto shots, but, and I know we could get the accumulative effect and maybe sicken him or maybe deciding him or maybe get the stoppage late, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I think Chisora will be in there when the final bell goes and I think he'll, I think he'll make Usyk work hard for the win. As you said, he's coming up to heavyweight. He had that one fight about 18 months ago, Usyk. Um, so Derek's going to be a proper test at heavyweight. But doesn't Derek have almost everything in front of him? You know, I know Usyk's a mandatory for the WBO for Anthony Joshua. And, and I'm not saying if Derek wins, he automatically becomes that mandatory. But he keeps himself in a very good position. Whereas if he was to lose, there's really nowhere for him to go. So what are you saying? Well, De- are you asking me if Derek will retire if he loses? Meaning, do you feel like he, you'll see Derek perform out of his grip and he will... Oh, no, I, I, I think Derek Chisora is a type of guy... Listen, everyone, some, again, someone can pick a hole and say, oh, this performance. But I'm saying nine times out of ten, Derek Chisora is the type of guy that leaves it all in the ring. You know, he does. He, he, he give, he's a tough man and he, he, he's, he's tough as nails and he, uh, he digs in. You know, you've got to like watching Derek Chisora fight because he, he gives it his all. You know, it's exciting to watch. You know, he's a lunatic at times, but that's what makes him exciting too. He's a character. You know, he boxing needs characters. And Jazor is a character, you know, and he's value for money. Like I say, maybe I, I can't think off the top of my head. I'm sure there probably is one or two fights where maybe he hasn't, it hasn't been the best. We've all been in those, do you know what I mean? Everyone's had a couple of those in their career, but nine times out of 10, you watch Derek Chisora fight, you are entertained. No, absolutely. Uh, Matt, I just want to get a couple of opinions on a couple of other things that in boxing at the moment. Floyd Mayweather made some comments uh, this week where he said the sanctioning bodies are ruining boxing with, with too many belts. We saw Teofimo Lopez become the, oh, well, it's an asterisk, undisputed champion against Lomachenko. When I spoke to Marisa Suleiman, he said to me that the franchise belt was not transferable. It was rather a, a recognition, a status. Now, do you regard Teofimo Lopez as the undisputed champion? Do you regard Devin Haney as the main WBC champion? How do you look at it with, with all these belts that we have at the moment? No, do you know what's happening? And Mayweather is right. And, and he said, he, like, he's people then jumping on, oh, well, it is hypocrisy. No, no, he's saying, he, including himself in it, so I don't think it is hypocrisy. He's admitting that we're all part of the problem, but what we're going to do, not be involved in boxing. We're not the ones who get to call these shots. By the way, you know, it's the sanctioning bodies or the commissions, but, and I don't know how you clean it up, so I'm not saying I know the answer, but we all know they're bullshit. Of course we know, do you know what I mean? No, no one's saying that. But 
I mean, I suppose it was the TV companies initially that used to like titles because they could bill it as a title. Um, but, you know, it, all these belts are just diluting the real belts. Do you know what I mean? The real champion. Because there's too many. And, 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 you know, we're the hardcore. So we know what everything is, really. And we can dif differentiate. But, and even sometimes we get fucking confused. It's that, there's that many going on. But imagine being a casual. Imagine not really being a boxing fan. You're a football fan that you follow your team religiously every week. But you like watching the boxing and the big fight catches the imagination. How do you work out who's what? Someone's, you know, it's just mental, you know. At least in the UFC, and this is a great thing with the UFC as well. And it's a good thing and a bad thing. So the UFC, obviously, it's centralised. I know there are other MMA brands, but it's, you know, by far got a strong grip on it, hasn't it, the UFC? So there's one champion. But the thing is there, the UFC make all the money, don't they? Actually, in terms of splits with revenue, the fighters don't really get paid that much to what they should. Where boxing, the, the fighters now are getting the lion's share of the money. You know, it's a lot more transparent, which obviously they're the ones getting punched in the head. So they should get more money. But then you could, some people might say, well, yeah, the guy who's headlining, the guy who's the star, he's getting the bulk of the money. But they're eating up all the money. Like Mayweather's earned a billion. But what about the guy who's doing you know, what about the USBA champions, NABF champions? They're good fighters. What about the British champions? They're good fighters. All right, they're not Floyd Mayweather, but they're professional fighters. They're, you know, the best of their, in their country. What, 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 how much do they get in a fight? You know, so even though the boxers are getting the main share of the money, the top boxer is, you know what I mean? Anthony Joshua is, Floyd Mayweather is, you know, these people are, you know, the, the guys, they, then, then it, it goes up. The pyramid isn't like this. The pyramid's like this. Do you know what I mean? So, but if you're a top, if you're top and you've got, you know, you've become world champion, you'll make a lot of money, you know, but I don't know. Again, look, we're going on a bit of a tangent, I suppose. <laughs> Just, we get talking about boxing, you could, could end up anywhere, couldn't we? But um, the, are there too many belts? Without a doubt. And, and, I, and I don't think Floyd May was a hypocrite saying that. He, he's admitting that he's part of the problem, but if you're involved managing fighters, you're promoting, you know, you, you, you're going to be, aren't you? But Because that's, that's the game. That's the way it's gone. But I think, all, I think most fighters would prefer one title. But then, but then there's got to be, there's got to be a FIFA type governing centralised body, a UFC. That's, you know, there's a top 10. There's a mandatory situation. There has to be fairness and transparency in that case. Like, but boxing's chaotic, isn't it? But then do people like it because of the chaos? I don't know. Matt, you know when the sanctioned bodies take, they obviously take money when you, when you fight for their belts. Is that a, a, a set fee or is that a percentage of, of purse? How does that work? Uh, I think it's usually a percentage. So oh, you know, the more money, yeah, of, of the purse. So obviously the more money you are earning, the more the bigger their sanctioning fee. So if you're anti Joshua and Tyson Fury and having this big clash next year, do you just say forget the belts? No, nah, they'll probably pay it, won't they? Because, you know, it's, people say belts don't matter, but they do matter a little bit, do you know what I mean? But it's, it, it's, it's not as simple as black and white because there's so many of them. They are, they are being diluted, but we all know Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua are the top two heavyweights in the world, just like we all know Lomachenko is the man. So, so Tiafimo is the man. You know, it, it goes back to when people were, were saying about linear champion doesn't mean anything. All right, maybe there isn't a belt, but it does mean something in, in people's eyes because if you're the man who beat the man, then you're the man. <laughs> you know, you're the man who beat the man, and because that's the lineage, isn't it? It's like, what's the lineage? People talk about lean, lineage in royal families, isn't it? You know, there's it, there's a line, isn't there? <laughs> it's like you're the if you win a vacant title that you got match and mandatory and no one was there and things got vacated and I don't know, it's not. You know, Tyson Fury beating Vladimir Klitschko isn't the same as Anthony Joshua beating Charles Martin for the vacant IBF, for the IBF, is it? Who, and Charles Martin won the title. I can't even remember what happened. There was, but I remember it was, there was someone got injured and he got in. So that's not the same, is it? Now, don't get me wrong, Anthony Joshua's since then made defence after defence after defence, beat Josie Parker, um, 
you know, Povetkin, all these guys. So no, this not one bit of my. It's not. It's no slant on him. I'm just saying in terms of when he won the title, he just won the title off Charles Martin, and when Klitsch, when Fury beat Klitschko, you can't compare those two wins. And it's like so, you know, t uh, Devin Haney, you know, Devin Haney, you can't compare Devin Haney's world title to the one that Tiafimo Lopez has just won. <laughs> Tiafimo Lopez just beat. Lamachenko, <laughs> you know, there's no, you can't compare those. Now, that, that's not to say Tevin Haney wouldn't beat Tiafimo Lopez if they fight. I, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? But I'm just saying in terms of, you know, the, the quality of the win, you know, and, 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 and the weight we play, Sonny, them then. Like, you know, for, for me, Tiafimo Lopez you now is the best lightweight in the world because he beat Lamachenko. That's it, you know. Now, so De Devin, that, that doesn't mean Devin Haney won't have a belt, but do, do, do people really recognise him as the best lightweight in the world? I don't think so. Not yet. Matt, I'm going to end on this controversial uh, last week, uh, judging, UK judging. You was there, you was there heard your commentary, uh, Ritson and Vasquez. Um, the board did an investigation and they came out and basically, in, in my words, they basically said, they were content and happy with the way Terry O'Connor scored and judged the fight. Now, a lot of eyebrows were raised because everybody I know, yeah, you might have the scoreline a little bit closer. It might not be 10 rounds to two. It might be eight to four. But there was no way that Ritson won that fight. Have we got a problem here in UK boxing now? Because this is constantly happening. People are talking about... When you go to Germany, you get bad decisions. When you go to America, you get bad decisions. But it happens so much here in our country. The thing, the thing in boxing is, uh, and it's what you have to be careful of, is when, the, the, so recently, there have been so many close fights where everyone's screaming robbery afterwards. You know, um, Natasha Jonas, Terry Harper, was a, it was a draw. I thought Jonas did enough. But definitely it wasn't a robbery that it was a draw. Um, you know, that, that, you can see the draw. But I, I thought Jonas won. I, I definitely had a win. I stand by it. But, you know, Katie Taylor fight against um, Pursue, the rematch. On the night, on commentary on the fight, I had it a draw. I watched it back on the Wednesday night, and I thought Katie Taylor definitely won it. Definitely won it. She definitely won six of the ten rounds, um, in my opinion, watching it back. So, you know... Eggington Cheeseman, that was a close fight. You know, I had uh, Cheeseman by one round. So, you know, if you've got Eggington by one round, I'm not going to say that's a robbery. It was a close fight with a lot of close rounds. You know, if, 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 if Eggington had got, you know, Eggington got it, it wouldn't have been a robbery. Cheeseman got it, it's not a robbery, but you've got people who are, you know, see it their way in a close fight and they think, ah, oh, it's a robbery. It's not a robbery, that's a close fight. You know, don't get me wrong. I didn't think Ritson Vasquez was a close fight. I didn't. Uh, but what? So you know, for me, I thought it was a bad decision. But what I'm saying is, because you've got people screaming robbery every time there's a close fight that didn't go their way they seen it or the way they wanted it, you you dilute it then when someone when there is a robbery because it's every week, every week, every week. I mean, every week, Robert uh, Smith must think, fuck it now. No, it's a close fight, it's a close fight. We get one like this, Ritson Vasquez, which, like I said, I didn't think it was a close fight. Then, you know, I think a lot of, I think, I think a lot of people thought this was a really bad decision. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? So, this probably is one that should be looked at. But because you've got so many people, because you've got every single week people screaming robbery when it's not a robbery, it's a close fight. It, it, when you do get a robbery, it, dil it dilutes it. It's a, you know, it's... Different what we're saying about the belts. Well, you've got too many belts, it dilutes it, doesn't it? You know, you know, you've got to be careful of diluting things and it's like the boy cry golf, isn't it? You know. Okay, Matt, thank you very much for your time. I know I said 10, 15 minutes earlier. We've got, we waffled on as always, 30 minutes. Yeah, uh, waffle, apologies for my doing your, your roast <laughs> dinner that you're probably cooking yourself or roast lunch or whatever it is. Uh, Matthew Mackin, Fire for TV, thank you very much. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. 
And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt.